what's going on team proof here and here are the nature cards from set two that i haven't yet to get to and last civilization so let's go ahead and finish strong so first up we got sago sagio sagoy sagoy giant <laughs> sagal i don't know the proper pronunciation for it so i'm showing you sure somebody will let me know but of course he's a giant each of your giants gets blocked if able and then during your turn whenever one of your giants wins a battle break one of your opponent's shields and it's a triple breaker this card being nine mana does make it a little bit more difficult to utilize because you have to accelerate into it otherwise it's going to be a little too slow for it to function but once it's on the board it's a huge body to have to deal with and it makes your cards like titan giant much more usable and much more threatening because they come with the 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 add-on of having to be blocked so it can move a creature anyway and then break your break on your opponent's shields so you have these two big bodies to deal with while one is just destroying your blockers along the way it gives a lot of more use out of bodacious giant which is a card that really hasn't seen a whole lot of use from set one um just because it's eight mana and kind of cumbersome to deal with now all that said i do feel this a little bit too slow right now because the meta is a lot of aggressive fast decks or accelerate into dragons which can come down before our big giant here can be much more of a threat to deal with so only right now is the right time for a car like sago giant sagoy giant so it kind of remains to be seen where he's going to fall in the course of the meta but i do have four of them <laughs> from all the packs that i cracked open so i am going to be experimenting with it just to see what i can do with it over the um at some point in time and next up we got a card that's very near and dear to my heart in pincer scarab it's a giant insect and this gets plus 2000 power for each card in your opponent's hand and it gets while your opponent has or this gets double breaker when its power is 6000 or more so this card here kind of steamrolls itself because just for the low low cost of your opponent having three cards in their hand he becomes a 7000 power double breaker which is very very fast and very very strong to have to deal with and then it becomes a double breaker which means when it breaks two shields assuming those aren't shield triggers they go to your opponent's hand and he, be, he gets plus 4000 power more on top of that which makes him even more of a steamroll to have to deal with and that's why he's very very near and dear to my heart because i played them way back in the day and he's a card that i used a lot for this very reason of being a four mana big beefy body to have to deal with and kind of just keeps powering up himself and it kind of at, after a certain point he can trade in the likes of alcadius or something that's very very big in and of itself and that's why i, I enjoy it because it's a big drop immediately threatening and just keeps getting bigger and bigger to have to make your opponent to deal with it next up we got cavern raider uh when this when this attacks your opponent and isn't blocked you may search your deck for a creature you may reveal one and add it to your hand then shuffle your deck this being the beast folk means it can potentially be evolution bait for bark whip and fighter dual fang it also has an, a threat of being a a card advantage option for you in um just being a search your deck for creatures however since it is a search skill that means it comes with the the nerf of searching meaning that it gives you three random options of course they're not duplicated but you still may not find what you're looking for which kind of makes this harder to include into your deck because while it still is a nice card it is nice to get a card from your deck it if you're trying to find something specific and you whiff it kind of feels really bad so i don't know if this is going to see a whole lot of play outside of um maybe like some vrima beast folk decks but that's probably worth experimenting to see if you can find some more use out of it than just there then we got vine charger four mana spell your opponent puts one of their creatures into their mana zone and charger it is kind of hard to to want to use um cards like natural snare um, madu scrum and vine charger here that removes a creature and puts it into your opponent's mana zone because being being something that accelerates your opponent while it is removal can put you in range of another potential threat i don't know how many times that i've run in into my opponent's shields they trigger fairy life and get one extra mana and then suddenly they're playing something like titan giant a turn sooner and they're like well if i just didn't break that shield then i wouldn't be able to play this thing a little bit faster and that's what kind of that's kind of what vine charger does and or similar cards in that it is nice to get the creature off the board but then you might be open up the door for a bigger threat to have to be de dealt with so that's why i'm not sure if vine charger is going to make its use in a the current state of the game 
like you may as well just go ahead and use natural snare because it comes with the benefit of being a shield trigger as well next up we have terror dragon onris vol six mana earth dragon it gets plus 2000 power for each of your nature creatures and it's a power breaker so while this does include itself now it does only top out at 14,000 power so while it is nice for a six mana uncommon you do have to fill your board with nature creatures which is easier said than done so i don't know how useful it's going to be you need to have itself and then two others on the board to make it a six thousand power double breaker for six mana which at this time is largely outpaced by a whole lot of other cards so where it's probably not great to use it and you rather use your resources on playing some of the other dragons that might be more useful or playing some of the dragon evolutions which start to drop in or it drop in the six mana slot seven mana slot and the eight mana slot so that's something to think about it is a nice budget option being only an uncommon but there, I think there's better dragons out there that are better budget options. Next up, we got Bakra Horn the Silent. Horn Beast, when, whenever one of your dragons or dragonlands enters the battle zone, put the top card of your deck into your mana zone. So just like Scream Slicer, it does have that nice one-two punch with Kachua. It also comes with the benefit of being usable with your Dragonoids, similar just like um, Scream Slicer. And it is cheaper, so it might find its way to be more useful. But there are a lot of ways to accelerate already to getting your dragons out early and like coco lupia just regular normal green um man acceleration options and then there's also a new one in call of dragons to be able to maybe accelerate two on three mana go right into five mana so i don't know if bakrahorn might find its place amongst all that competition next up we got malulu fairy of the snowy valley uh, snow fairy of course and then whenever one of your dragons would be destroyed destroy this creature instead so this is a saver for dragons even though it doesn't have the keyword for it and it is nice to be able to just have another way to protect your big dragons and it comes with the the combo of combining with kachua in that usually when you at the end of your turn you would have to destroy the dragon that she summons but if you have malulu on the board you just destroy malulu instead and you keep the dragon around so your opponent has to waste two mana, two burn spells to get rid of your dragon if you have Malulu on board, technically. So she is nice to keep around for just those purposes as well. I, I was expect to see her in a lot of common dragon decks. Next up, we got Surprise Giant. <laughs> I love the artwork on this guy. <laughs> like just slamming down into the earth like surprise. <laughs> but six mana giant, or ooh, five mana giant shield trigger creature. And... It is nice to have it. It is one of the bigger bodies you can get off of a shield trigger creature. And then it combos with Sagoy Giant that we talked about uh, initially. But other than that, it is kind of just kind of vanilla. There's no, currently there's no giant evolution creatures. And so you can't use it for that intended purpose. And for five mana for nature cards, there's other other options that you can look into or just use, spend your five mana on something else that's not necessarily nature as well. And then we got Popo Flower Petal Dancer, Snow Fairy, Tap Skill, put the top card of your deck into your mana zone. So with all the acceleration options and nature like I talked about with Bakura Horn, it is kind of it is gonna be hard for Popo to find use because there's already Fairy Life and Bronze Arm Tribe, which cost two and three mana respectively. And for Popo here to outpace something like Bronze Arm Tribe, she has to live for two turns. She has to live the initial turn then you have to tap down to then get the top card. Then she has to live through that turn, and then she has to tap down again. And with tap skills, meaning you can't, it has to be used instead of attacking, you can't use the tap skill and then summon something off top with the newfound mana. So just very awkward, very not very fast, and you're better off using other means in my opinion. And then we have Shaman and Melissa, Melting Snow Fairy. Uh, two mana, Snow Fairy, when destroyed, put it into your mana zone instead. So this is very good in the in aggressive decks just to have you something that can have a benefit when destroyed it does compete with space with um poisonous mushroom two mana when it comes into play you can put a card from your hand into the mana zone however this come this comes with um this doesn't cost you a card an additional card in your hand like mushroom does you can combine with something like dark soul creation to um, nuke it, um, draw three cards, then you accelerate yourself up to five mana. That's uh, probably a common application you can see. Next up, we have a, a personal fan favorite of mine again in Quixotic Kiro Swine Snout. Two mana Beast Folk. When another creature enters the battle zone, this creature gets plus 3,000 power until the end of turn. So, what this means is while it's sitting on the board, 
and your opponent summons a creature, it gets buffed up, and similar when you um, summon a creature, gets buffed up. So you can play this on turn two, on turn three, summon something else, and it becomes 4,000 power, and then you can attack into your opponent's shields. And then, assuming your opponent has something on board, you force your opponent to either not summon on their turn to help to remove um, Swine Snout here, or they have to remove it through a spell and then play something else after that, so that way Swine Snout doesn't get buffed up if they have power-based removal. So it makes your it makes the opponent's life a little bit more difficult while Swine Snout's on the board, which makes it better for the aggressive player who's using it. So that's something to keep in mind. Does it also have interactions with Magma Rex and other power-based removal from creatures? So when it, I keep saying so. <laughs> when it comes to that, you have to figure out who gets priority and the priority comes in a couple ways if it's your turn and you you have swine sound on your board and you attack into your opponent's shield and they, you trigger magma rex since it's your turn you get turn priority so your swine sound is going to get power before magma rex activates which kills all creatures that have 1000 power or less so your swine snout snit, your swine snout lives in that scenario. In the scenario of swine snout on your board and you summon in a magma rex on your turn, the game only gives priority to the creature that's already, or the your, the game gives priority to the creature that's coming into play over the creature that's already on the board. Which means that since magma rex is coming down, that means it gets priority over swine snout getting power. So your swine snout will die as opposed to you choosing it like you would in, um, the TCG game. So a couple things to think about while you're using Swine Snout to make sure you get maximum benefit out of it. But all in all, it's an amazing card. One of the strongest two drops that are going right now, um, just in terms of raw power. And it's gonna find its way into a lot of aggressive decks for sure. And finally, not even the not least this time, final card of reveal season, uh, we have Muscle Charger. Three mana spell, each of your creatures get plus 2,000 power until the end of turn and charger. So this is great for swarm decks because you can just buff up the whole team by plus 3,000 power. This is also really nice for cards that have power thresholds slash power breaker to be able to make them or be able to help them reach the next threshold or in the case of Pencil Scarab, make it to the threshold to make it become a double breaker. So something to keep in mind as you're using cards like these is just like those little small interactions to get you a little bit more out of them but it's in terms of the three mana charger spells in my opinion this one is the strongest one next one being bone dance charger depending on what your deck is trying to accomplish but this one has a, a wide range of benefit it helps your smaller creatures maybe hit over certain blockers um and yeah does it help you maybe be able to trade as well so it has a lot of a lot of benefit to it and a lot of upside to it but that'll do it for all the cards in set two i'm pretty sure that i hit everything in the course of these four videos. If I've missed something, I'm not going back and doing this again. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed all the videos or the one long video, depending on how I chopped it up. And yeah, uh, make sure you leave likes, make sure you subscribe, make sure you come check out the stream. I would love to have you there and look out for more videos in the future. So until the next one, peace, be easy.